Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, love, laugh, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Fett on UBNRadio.com. And welcome. You are tuned in to my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at naturally high noon out of the Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood, California with Universal Broadcasting Network. And now every Thursday on my syndicated channel, CNBC KCAA AM 1050 out of Loma Linda. And that's with my God, a 7 o'clock. I knew there was something missing. 7 p.m. for your commute pleasure home and it is pst time so if you're on the east coast hello to all my listeners in new york and philadelphia who said hello through ben thank you so much and peace and blessings to all of you also in ireland and in india huge peace in and peace out shout outs to you thank you for tuning in all over the planet and i know that the success of this show is simply because Everybody is tired of the CNN, constantly negative news, or the gossip, the scandal, and the K-words, Kardashian talk that goes on everywhere else. You're tuned in here to a show about hope and how to be happy 88% of the time. And today, we have a really great topic. I've got the author here of a book called The Introverts in Love. And it's a follow-up book to her other one, Introvert's Way. And her name is Sophia Dembling. She has been writing the Introvert's Corner blog for Psychology Today. She's also writing an advice column focused on introverts and relationships for A Quiet Revolution, a website launching in the spring of 2015, right now. Demling is the author of 100 Places in the USA Every Woman Should Go and has won two Lowell Thomas Gold Medals for her travel writing. She lives in Dallas, Texas. So without further ado, please welcome to the studio, Sophia Dembling. <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. So introverts, let me, let me um, see how close my definition of introverts, extroverts are. As you can tell, I am a, an extrovert on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> Although after reading some of your book, I, book, I think that I have, uh, I, I might have tendencies for a closet introvert and we'll talk about that later. But how are you defining introverts? Well, the definition we're most comfortable using is the idea that extroverts tend to gain energy from social interaction, mm -hmm. from being out and about, from dealing with people, and introverts are drained of energy by that same sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so what's interesting is that you might not necessarily be able to look at a person and say, that's an introvert, that's an extrovert, because many of us introverts, that is, I am one, mm -hmm. uh, are able to behave as extroverts. We mm -hmm. can get out there and, and mix it up and go to parties and I can speak in public. It's more about what happens afterwards and mm -hmm. how exhausted we are mm -hmm. by that effort. Mm -hmm. You know, I can go out and go and have a great time with a bunch of people, but then I need maybe a day of solitude to, to recharge. Right, to balance out the energy spent. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. I use Myers-Briggs personality inventory and their definition on that dimension, extroversion, introversion is exactly as you're saying. Extroverts get energy from being in interactions and uh, introverts get energy from being in solitude. Mm -hmm. So now, now for those people who say, well, I'm a little bit of both, uh, it is a group difference. We're not stereotyping here, but there's an actual group difference, correct? that some people have a preference for one or the other. 
Yes, exactly. And it all exists like so much of our personalities on a continuum. Mm -hmm. So there are going to be some people who are way over on one end or the other of the scale, but right. most of us fall somewhere in the middle of it. And, right. and, you know, the closer you are to the middle, I think the more you would perhaps describe yourself as an ambivert where you're more comfortable with either. Oh, but I think you'll find you fall somewhere along right, that scale. Right. Well, last, uh, Last month, I had someone read my charts and found out that I had six planets in Leo. Not only am I a Leo, I have six planets in Leo. So I think that qualifies more as an extrovert. <laughs> <laughs> so, it must be. Yes. And I love the fact that in, in your book, you say this is written for in introverts, not extroverts, because extroverts don't seem to have a problem expressing what it is that they... <laughs> That's right, although extroverts might find it useful to understand their yes. introverts a little better. And, and even more so, I think, the first book, Introverts Way, which is a, sort of a, 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 a introverts 101. Mm. And I think it's a great way to learn about the qualities of introverts that sometimes are misunderstood. Right. So let's go to that. Um, introverts are misunderstood in relationships. What would you say the, the top three uh, misunderstandings are for introverts in relationships? Well, it can be hard to know if an introvert is interested in you because okay. they tend to not lay it all out there on the table. Mm -hmm. It can be hard to know when an introvert is upset. We tend to not be very con confrontational, and so you sometimes have to sort of either draw things out or, or leave a lot of room for, for an introvert to process and then communicate things that are on their minds. Um, you, don't call and, that, you don't call that passive-aggressive? It can slip into passive aggressive. Okay, Absolutely. so it is. And so think, it isn't. Mm -hmm. I, that's that's a really important point because I tend to assume, and I tell my clients all the time, drop out of MSU University, make shiitake up, because if someone's not addressing the conflict, they're not necessarily automatically a passive aggressive. And I got yeah, that it, from your book. So mm -hmm, the introvert really important. does have a problem. Yeah, I mean, but you, it, it's okay. The, the introvert might say, okay, we've, the problem has been brought up. Now I need to go and think about it for a while and mm. before I can discuss it. We need, we need processing time. We need deep processing time. But I then tell introverts, if you, if you say you need that time to step aside and think about it, it's then your job to go and say, okay, I'm ready to talk now and not mm -hmm. expect the person to draw you out yet again. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's sort of we are allowed to do what we need to do to be most effective, but we also have to take responsibility I for like making that. sure that we're not pulling away. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that balance because it speaks to some people come and say, well, that's just the way I am. I'm an introvert, and just if you don't like it, go find an extrovert. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not necessarily that way. So one of your chapters I love is, do, do introverts, what was it, uh, flock, birds uh, of a feather flock together, or opposites attract? So mm -hmm. if you are an introvert, are, you, are, you, are, are more successful relationships from those who uh, introvert with an introvert? Well, that was very interesting to me because really it, it's, it doesn't matter. Introverts hmm. do great with introverts, and introverts do great with extroverts. Those are not really the deciding factor. There are a lot of introverts um, who really like having somebody who sort of pulls them out and draws them out of themselves and perhaps does all the, the heavy lifting for a social life. You know, that uh -huh. they'll make the friends and they'll get the invitations, and the introvert just gets to kind of ride along and, and enjoy that energy. Okay. There are other introverts who find that really exhausting, and they're happier with somebody who's going to stay home with them and going to appreciate the same kind of quietness that they do. Mm. And so really it's, it's more knowing yourself and what you're looking at than deciding because I'm an introvert, I have to have X or Y. So, so both can be successful or unsuccessful. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so what, what are some tips that you give to extroverts who, um, who are drawn to introverts and then complain about the way the introvert is. Well, you know, the, the, I'm not talking issue. personally at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, the issues between introvert extrovert couples. I mean, it 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 it's any relationship. It's mm -hmm. you have to make these 
discussions explicit Mm -hmm. and say, hey, you know, I need to be able to go out more. Um, You know, how do you feel about that? Or you're not going to change the person and and you shouldn't want to and if it's if it's unbearable then it might be a mismatch right but there are lots of ways you can sort of find to compromise for example an introvert extrovert relationship if the extrovert needs a lot more you know socializing than the introvert then you have to agree that that person can go out on their own Mm -hmm. and 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 not resent that and at the same time the introvert You know, no texting every five minutes, no calling, no passive-aggressive punishment because you feel neglected. It has to be Mm. an understanding that because we have these two different needs, we've got to figure out a way that both of us are getting our needs met. Mm -hmm. And that goes, of course, the opposite way, too. The the extrovert has to agree to to, to stay home sometimes and and have that weekend of just watching movies or whatever it is the introvert Mm -hmm. needs to feel bonded and connected. It sounds it's like it's that dreaded C word compromise Compromise. (laughs) (laughs) lots of it (laughs) lots of it right so so would you say it does take more work if it's an extrovert introvert relationship versus the same I think that it takes a different kind of work. It okay. definitely takes some ex- explaining each other mm-hmm. um, to 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 come to the middle ground, and perhaps you know there's going to be some resentment, some push pull for a while. Mm-hmm. This is a relationship. Introvert introvert relationships have their own challenges. It's it's easy to sort of because we tend to be non confrontational, speaking in, in sweeping general. generalizations. Right, right. But that's what I heard quite a bit from the introverts I interviewed for the book. It's kind of easy to let keep sweeping things under the table mm-hmm. and not deal with things. Mm-hmm. Um, I had one woman who was married early young to an introvert, and she said she felt that really they were both introverts. Um, contributed to the breakup of the marriage, and she's now married to an extreme extrovert. She says it's really a very healthy relationship. Huh, it's also easy for introvert intro relationships to kind of flatline, you know, mm-hmm. where they they get so mellowed out and so kind of peaceful that it doesn't have real juice to it. Mm. And so, you know, introverts might have to work a little harder to make sure they're staying connected and they're not just kind of you know, it's not a Quaker meeting of everybody sitting silently all the time. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I I went to your um, page one oh seven. I love your uh, your introvert pickup lines from Twitter. Oh, yeah. so, so let's transition from okay relationships to actual dating. So an introvert dating. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to say this, so I won't. Uh, how about I go back to my place (laughs) I love that one I wish I were an extrovert so it would be easier to talk to you now that's a very honest one that's a good one it is a very good one come here and sit quietly in a corner often (laughs) I like that one I love that one Um, let's see hey that's a great book but you should keep reading it and I'm really sorry I interrupted you (laughs) You look as uncomfortable as I feel, and I mean that in a good way. (laughs) That's a sweet one, too. That would work with me. Um, Hey, I noticed you noticing me, so I pretended to look at something on my phone. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and this is my favorite, the last one. A A little awkwardness is cute, right? Good. I'm about to be painfully adorable. (laughs) So that's so that's introverts dating, and this is one of those uh, truly. I, I think I when I'm attracted to an introvert, the the number one uh, frustrating thing is they'll look at me, they'll smile at me, and then they'll do nothing, <laughs> and I right. don't want to have to say something first I don't want to be because in my mind the BS going on the belief system that doesn't work for me is is that a man should be the one who starts up the conversation and if he has any cojones at all he's gonna come over and you know introduce himself and so I've had to really not take it personally that when that happens it 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 could be truly a function of the comfort level of an introvert 
I, I think it's very likely, and it's you know it's a gender role that we're all sort of always sort of fighting against. I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, I had one guy who said, you know, have mercy, please. <laughs> it never it never gets old to have a woman come and talk to us, you know, to talk to me. Right. Um, I think women tend to be approached so much more and not always receptive because of that, mm -hmm. that men might even have a little bit of an extra hurdle to go over, mm. you know, mm -hmm. that, that a particularly, you know, young, single, attractive woman, a guy may think, well, she's probably hit on all the time. So mm -hmm. I'm, you know, so if they're already slightly reluctant, then it's even harder. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think that if you have the gift of extroversion and the gift Thank of being able to, to speak to anybody, then it's a generous thing to use that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and quite a few of the introverts in my book who were with extroverts, who are in relationships with extroverts, mm -hmm. were actually approached by the extrovert and 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 they, the extrovert kind of got things rolling right, um, right and then once you get things rolling if you can settle down a little bit and let the introvert have room to to express themselves mm -hmm. they can be very good compat you know good dates because they're very good one-on-one -on -one. they're really good listeners um they're good conversationalists when they're given the space to do it mm -hmm. so if you can just break through as an extrovert you have that gift mm -hmm. um you can open up all sorts of possibilities. I just had a vision of Star Trek breaking through into new <laughs> dimensions. It sounds like my dating it, it life. Is. I call it our, I call it the introvert leave me alone force field. Ah, perfect. <laughs> That's so perfect. And, and I and I cheat, talk to introverts as well about learning to let that down when they want to. Mm -hmm. It's a very functional thing to have this force field to protect yourself when you want to be left alone, mm -hmm. but you also have to be able to let it down when you're in situations where you would like to meet people and right. would like to be approached. Right. And that means not looking at your phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or not sitting in the corner. Not sitting in the corner, right, or even right. if you are sitting in the corner, uncrossing your legs and arms and looking around and, and, and thinking engaged, mm. feeling engaged puts out that energy mm -hmm. of I'm present in this group. Right. If you're just tuned in, you are listening to some tips from the author of Introverts in Love. So if you're an introvert out there and you're you're looking to get into a relationship or making your relationship work better this is the show for you uh, you are tuned in to take my advice I'm not using it get balanced with dr. Marissa so Sophia on the introversion how many in our population do you have that stat I meant to look it up I, I ran out of time it's roughly half Half Roughly half, half is okay. What it <laughs> okay, so because I'm a little biased because I am the type A plus plus extrovert on steroids, that often my my show not my shows necessarily or definitely my viewpoint is when people cannot do something or choose not to do something, I pull out you know the gospel according to Nike, just do it, and so <laughs> I think that my I'm getting a, a better awareness around that may work for the extrovert it may not work for the introvert well one of the things I really like to emphasize however is the difference between shyness and introversion oh good and um, it's really it's, they're mixed up a lot okay. and they're, they're, they're very different mm. in that introversion is motivation it's how much you want to do these things, you know, okay. how much you want to go to that party or want to interact. Shyness is fear. You might want to mm. do it, but you're afraid to. So you can definitely be a shy introvert, and I think there probably are a lot of us, especially mm. since as introverts, we've been told we're doing it wrong for so long. You know, you go to a right. party, I like to sit in a corner, and everybody says, that's the wrong way to party. Right. Well, no, it's not it's my way to party. Uh -huh. um, you can be a not shy introvert, which is what I am. I can mm -hmm. talk to people and I can go to parties. Uh, you can be a not shy extrovert, obviously. And the people who have the hardest times are the shy extroverts because those are the ones who really want to interact and want to be out there but are frightened. Mm -hmm. And so I, when I talk to introverts, I say that really you want to pay attention to whether you're using your introversion it's telling yourself it's introversion that's preventing you from doing things you want to do because if it's that then you might be looking at fear oh, okay. rather than introversion and okay. fear can be overcome introversion can't and really doesn't need to be 
great distinction. I learn. I love when I learn something new. So, so because there are extroverts who uh, that I work with, who because of the fear of failure, or perfectionism, don't put themselves out there. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. that sounds like the shy extroversion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, it could be, or or you know, just we all have our our terrors of <laughs> success. Right, right, right. Now, do, now you interviewed how many uh, for your book, your study? It was uh, oh, in the vicinity of fifty. In the vicinity, introverts and, mm-hmm. and single, married, newlyweds, all long time. Mm-hmm. You know, all different statuses. Anything surprising to you as an introvert? I guess really the, the the one surprising thing to me was what we discussed early on is that either kind of relationship. I, I thought for sure I would come up with, you know, yes, you want to look for an extrovert, and yes, you want to look for an introvert. And I think that was really, for me, the most surprising. Otherwise, um, you had you had felt all of it. I, you know, well, it it gave it, it made me think about things I hadn't thought about explicitly, and that it was all very interesting and very enlightening. But I can't say anything made me go, "Wow!" It never occurred okay. to me. Okay, and and what gave you this inspiration to even talk as an introvert and sort of, you know, put the moose on the table, as I like to say, because I'm Canadian and about the elephant <laughs> in the room. <laughs> what what gave you that inspiration to to begin to give introverts a voice? Well, it sort of happened in an oddball way in that, I, I, as you mentioned, I'm a travel writer as well, mm-hmm. and I, I read a book about introversion, a book called Introvert Power. I'll give it by Lori Helgo, also another good book on the subject. Okay. And it kind of inspired me to write an essay for a website called World Hum called Confessions of an Introverted Traveler. Mm. Um, because one of the things one hears as a frequent traveler is that meeting people is the reason to travel. And if you're not meeting people, then you're not, you know, really traveling. Right. And you're my doing something wrong. Says, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're kind of cheating or you're doing a lame job of it or something. And so I wrote about how, well, that's not really the way it is for me. And I talked about how I am as a traveler. And the essay just exploded. Um, I wrote a follow-up of tips, and those were the two most read um, essays on that site for that year, 07, 2007 it was. Great. Um, and so when I started talking about psychology today, about blogging, this was the topic I, I landed on. And again, it, it, it caught on very, very quickly. It's, mm-hmm. It was really clear that introverts were anxious for validation. Yeah. And of course, they're all at their computers, so it was perfect. <laughs> Okay. And and so it just sort of snowballed from there. And again, you know, who knew I'd be a professional introvert? <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. And I mean, for fifty percent of the people, I guess it's about time. The extroverts have have had no problem <laughs> saying what's on mm-hmm. their mind. It's about time that we balance things out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think and, and understanding what I hear more often than anything else, and I hear it from people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, is thank goodness I thought there was something wrong with me. Uh, yeah, I'm I, so I'm relieved getting that. to hear this. Yeah, I'm getting that now, not realizing how wrong our society makes introverts. I mean, I just got that as an awareness in in this interview so i I apologize (laughs) i I apologize on behalf of the extroverts that i do represent (laughs) and on behalf of the introverts we thank you (laughs) yay let's have a group hug we're good we're at one again we are all introverts and extroverts yes yes absolutely i'm all about that too so uh you are you can i ask you personal questions are you married I am married. You are to an introvert or an extrovert? He is introverted, um, perhaps a little less so than I, okay. but um, also introverted. And, and here's, see, here's a kind of interesting thing that can come up. I work, I'm a writer. I work at home alone. Mm-hmm. He has a picture framing shop and deals with people all day long. Mm-hmm. And so we're having to work out the fact that he comes home at night and he doesn't want to do anything or talk to anybody or see anything. Mm-hmm. Thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm ready to, I had enough alone time. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know? right. And so we're trying to, I'm having to kind of make my own plans and get out by myself a little bit more because um, we just have different needs by the end of the day. Right. And even this, this is something coming up even in an introvert, introvert, introvert couple. Interesting, interesting. You have to practice what you're teaching. Mm-hmm. Don't you hate that? Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> That's why my show is oh. called the Take My Advice. I'm not using it. That, that, <laughs> I like that, that way I get it covered. That's wonderful. How long have you been married? 
twenty oh, wow. six years, okay. I think, this so year. He's gonna bop me on the head for never uh, being able to remember, but somewhere <laughs> in that vicinity. <laughs> no, well, I, wait, wait, wait. No, a, a twenty next year is our twenty fifth. Oh, twenty sixteen will be our twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. So we'll we'll let you make it up to him. Um, <laughs> Give him a, sh a love shout out right now and tell me what's the the top three things that you love about him. The top, his sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Nobody can make me laugh until I cry like Aww. he can. Uh, he's just he's very very quiet and very very dry, and he comes out with things that I can laugh for a day on one Aww, line. Of his. That's wonderful. Um, he's very responsible. He he takes care of stuff, mm. um, and he's handsome. Oh, <laughs> did you so, hear the, I, I heard the love there. That was beautiful. What's his name? Tom. Tom, you are loved. I hope you hear this uh, little love shout out right now from your wife on the air. <laughs> All right. So besides, okay, so, so we, we were talking about dating. What are some tips that you tell introverts who would prefer? And, and I'm at, I'm telling you this actually my closet introverted side I have to be honest with you uh, I deal with people every day all day and so I have four free days a month Thursdays and I'm a full-time mom as well of teenagers and wow. I I I practice I, I try to practice what I teach I tell all my clients and I tell my listeners you know there's nothing like romance there's nothing like relationships to uh, you can't get that kind of feeling from friendships or family so have a relationship <laughs> a, a relationship a day will keep the doctor away no I'm kidding but have a relationship but I have to tell you that that the free time that I do have the best date I have is with myself and mm -hmm. I can look forward to going home and you know getting some take at my favorite takeout and sitting with a, a good movie that I may have missed in the theater. And I am getting to the point where I'm thinking that I don't need a relationship. And I read in your book that the statistic now from, let's see if I can find it, uh, the doctor, here it is, Eric Klingenberg, Mm -hmm. that uh, there are 5 million people in the U.S. Be between the ages of 18 and 34 who now live alone mm -hmm. uh, by choice, by choice, yep. by choice. Yep. So, so tell me about that. Well, it's really interesting. It, it's, um, it's, a, it's a trend and it's something in a way similar to introverts. The people who are um, single by choice are having to push against some really powerful stereotypes mm -hmm. that they're lonely and that they're sad and in fact research finds that people who are not in in long-term relationships are not married have a larger social circle it's actually married people who tend to get a little bit more isolated mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. the people I, i've interviewed one young man um an attorney a very you know lovely a handsome young man and he's just doesn't want to be married he mm -hmm. says, it's not like I sit at home every night. I go out all the time. Mm -hmm. I have close friends. I have a life. I just can't imagine having somebody there all the time. So where he did, said that just the idea of having somebody pinging you all the time, even if you're in different rooms, right. is, is not comfortable for mm -hmm. him. And I think that what we have to come to understand is that that sort of day-to-day -day intimacy is not necessarily for, mm -hmm. for everybody. I spoke mm -hmm. to another guy who's in a long-term relationship, but they don't live together, and, and they're uh, both fine with that. Wow, that's interesting, and we'll have to come back and talk a little bit more about that. It is uh, time to thank our sponsors who are making this show possible. So we'll be back in two and two. Have you ever had a sweet potato cookie? Be the talk of the holiday table with yam good cookies and four unique tastes. All sweet potato with either pecan, ginger pecan, pineapple coconut, even topped with almonds. Available in West LA. So follow us on social media and visit www.yamgoodcookies.com to order. A holiday treat launched in the season of Thanksgiving that will now be enjoyed all year long. So have a yam good holiday. Do you suffer from neck or back pain? Then it's time for Casilia. Casilia is an affordable yet easy to use tool that is carefully engineered for wellness. Just 20 minutes a day can treat pinched nerves, back pain, neck pain, and much more. 
The manufacturers of Cassilia are so confident that it works, it comes with a 30 day, 100% money back guarantee. You have nothing to lose but your pain and stiffness. Cassilia is personally endorsed by Dr. Marissa. To learn more, visit www.cassilia.com today. That's K A C E L I A.com. And welcome back. You are tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at Naturally High Noon on UBN, Universal Broadcasting Network, and every Thursday, PST at 7 p.m. on NBC News Radio, KCAA AM 1050. And today we are talking about introverts with the author, Sophia Dembling, of Introverts in Love. And we just went to break talking about actually a good looking lawyer. <laughs> Where does he live? <laughs> I'm not telling. Ah. I don't want him chased down. <laughs> Fermented. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, you can give him my number. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, I'm bad. Um, so, so introverts and extro extroverts who are not actually interested in relationships. So I'm, my guess is that there are, this is more from an introverted place, that introverts are, are more and more on the rise, the 5 million who b are by choice not in a relationship. And, and or, you said they, they live apart, but they have a relationship. Tell me about that couple. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there's a very interesting blogger, Dr. Bella DiPaolo, on Psychology Today, and she writes a, a blog about living single, about single by choice. Mm -hmm. And she says, uh, she calls it living together apart, I think is what she said. Okay. And it, it allows people to, you know, they're, they're in committed relationships, mm -hmm. but they keep their own residences. Maybe they've lived alone for so long they don't want to combine households. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy who I spoke to for my book had already been in two marriages that hadn't worked out. And okay. He felt his need for solitude the contributed to that. And the, so the lawyer. he decided, well, this is fine. Hmm? The lawyer? No, no, this oh, okay. is the guy who's in the uh, relationship where they live separately. The lawyer is not as far as, he dates a lot, but I, I, don't, know that he, I don't know that he's in a relation, okay. relationship. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sorry. Um, I'm fixated, But anyway, so obviously. he decided that, that he was not cut out for marriage, and the woman he's been dating, for, um, dating in a relationship with for five years now mm -hmm. is perfectly happy to maintain their, her own household. Okay. Now, I actually, when I first started having relationships, had a thought that my perfect setup would be a, a big house, and I would have my room, and he would have his room, and then we would have one room that was joint. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. does that make me an aberration or an introvert-extrovert or, or what? You know, I, I, I don't have any data on that, but it sounds, it works it, it works for me. I mean, you know, there are a lot of people who keep separate bedrooms for, mm -hmm. for better sleep, and that was actually kind of common back in you know, Victorian Edwardian times. Right. And, uh, you know, I know, I know of couples who have duplexes, you know, side-by-side -side apartments, mm -hmm. and so, so they're sort of in the same vicinity. You know, I think we all need our personal space, and I right. think that the pressure, to, the, the, the pressure of togetherness uh, can be really daunting for right. a lot of us. Right, because there is that BS, the, that belief system that if you aren't in a relationship, there's something wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I yeah, mean, it's absolutely. usually the, the second question, you know, first question is, what do you do? And the second question, are you in a relationship? And, mm -hmm. and, and I've actually had people say to me, uh, when I say I'm not in a relationship, they're like, oh, <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> that puppy look. And it's like, no, 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 I'm fine. I, I have a lot of friends. But it is, you know, there is, a, and I've been fighting this BS too, this belief system that if a relationship doesn't work out, then it's a failed relationship. And to me, that's like the biggest BS because if you have a relationship that doesn't last a lifetime, that doesn't mean it's a failure. It's just a chapter in your book of romance. There's no, mm -hmm. there's no good or bad. It just is a chapter and you've learned something about yourself that you needed to learn that makes you yep. a more expanded person. 
But that's yep. just my, my viewpoint. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. Oh, good. Good. Thank you for that. <laughs> so um, for advice to extroverts who are dating introverts. Mm -hmm. uh, give them room. You're going to feel like the most fascinating person in the world because introverts are really good listeners. But they might appreciate being drawn out you know mm. we're not likely to just kind of muscle our way into a conversation and so if you find that you're doing all the talking and you're doing all the planning and you're doing everything it may be that they want you to be that way mm -hmm. but it may be that they're just a little bit overwhelmed mm -hmm. and, and and don't really know how to work their way into it so mm -hmm. every now and then kind of take a step back and and make a point of asking the questions and 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 they might just need a little more room mm -hmm. the other really really important thing is that introverts need time on their own not because they want to get away from you but mm -hmm. because they need time on their own mm -hmm. it, it's not a rejection it's not personal this is something that it's not personal it's, this comes up within families and in friendship mm -hmm. and in relationships where introverts need to get away by themselves, they need to maybe not go to that party or not get together this weekend, mm -hmm. and it's not a rejection. It's simply what they need to be healthy. Mm -hmm. I need to travel by myself. I love to travel by myself, mm -hmm. and I would miss it terribly. And my husband, fortunately, he understands that. He gets that and even appreciates some time alone in the house mm -hmm. while I'm traveling. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really important to understand that introverts are just getting what they need. They're not running away from you. Right. And that those kinds of expectations that extroverts have of introverts uh, or extroverts have of anyone or introverts, have, I think those are the expectations that get us into trouble in any relationship. That if you loved me, you mm -hmm. would dot, dot, dot. If you loved me, you would be happy to see me. If you loved me, you'd want to spend time with me. If you right. loved me, you would tell me how much you love me. If you loved me, you get my drift. So I get it. <laughs> so, and I think it works with the introverts. The introverts have to understand, too, that just because the extroverts need a lot of other people, mm -hmm. that's not saying they don't need mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's yes. Again, an intro, the extrovert has that need to have a lot of people and to have people around. And maybe you want every weekend to be just the two of you, but that's not fair mm -hmm. to that extrovert. Mm -hmm. So so for my listeners who are extroverts who are in relationship with introverts, I would uh, say the balance tool here, one is um, don't take things personally. If someone doesn't want to spend time with you, it has no reflection on you. It is what they need to feel happy 88% of the time. Uh, second, I hear uh, uh, to be aware of how much airtime extroverts are taking that in order to give the invitation for an introvert to interact, it would to get this to give them the space and not demand the interaction immediately. Say something now. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's a very important point when it comes to conflict. And mm. I, I, I'm sure you're probably aware of John Gottman's research into the things that, uh, you know, conflict, how couples handle conflict is a really good indicator about how successful their relationship is going to be. Mm -hmm. And so I urge introvert, extrovert couples in particular to talk about what they need. For, you know, extroverts might need to just get it all out there and blurt it out. Sometimes it comes out more explosively or more emotionally mm -hmm. than, than it is necessary perhaps or, you know, that might frighten the introvert. Whereas introverts need to get it out and then take it away to their cave and, you know, rummage through it a little bit and then discuss it. And mm -hmm. so they need to be aware of these things. And so the introvert needs to be able to say, okay, I hear you. Now I need to think about it. And we'll finish talking about it later. Yes. And the introvert needs to realize that just because the extrovert is just spilling words all over the place, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. That is simply a way of expressing mm -hmm. themselves and That's listen to the point. words and step back from the emotion. Mm -hmm. And extroverts need to remember what Dr. Phil says is you can't unring a bell. So <laughs> when you spill, spill with caution because mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't take it back, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So I had a question from my sound engineer. Uh, he says, what about people who are, one day they are extroverted 
and then when the next day they're introverted so what advice do you have for the confused <laughs> <laughs> well i mean to me i would say that we that would probably indicate a level of introversion because again mm. we are able to get out there and put it all out there mm -hmm. you know and behave as extroverts it's when you need to shut it down for a day mm -hmm. uh, afterwards in order to recuperate mm -hmm. that would suggest you're an introvert. You know, extroverts can go and go and go and go and go. Yes. Energizer you know, I have friends Benny. on Facebook mm -hmm. and I just get tired even looking at their status <laughs> updates. Where you know, but but if you do need to pull back, then you're probably falling a, a, a little more on the more on the introversion side. side. Mm -hmm. And then and then the follow up question from my assistant producer is, uh, are there any are there any, is there a relationship between horoscopes and what? what sign you are and introversion and extroversion i don't know the answer okay. i don't know enough about horoscopes well, to we'll tell have you to get that Rachel but i think that's a cool on. question yeah just to see how the stars are aligned <laughs> around <laughs> around that around that basis so now i'm a gemini and so well i guess that would mean i can be an extrovert i can be an introvert right <laughs> right yeah yeah, I, there's no question on a Leo. We're just not even going to go there. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I loved what you said about it, who we are, that, that you can't change that and there's no judgment on it. Mm -hmm. So accepting ourselves, if we're an extrovert, there are benefits and there are consequences to being an extrovert. As an introvert, there's benefits and there's consequences. But I do, I agree with you that I think our society has really put a value judgment that extroverts really get the more, more the attention, more the time, more the toys. And that if you are to be successful, you have to become extroverted. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and it is, and it is, I don't know if that's fair or not, but if you want if you want fairness, go to Pomona. We have a county, <laughs> county fair named Pomona over here. So, so, but, but I do know that many, many of my clients who are introverted have learned how to be and act in an extroverted <laughs> way, which you have yeah. too. I mean, you absolutely, yeah. because of, you can write a book, but if you don't promote the book, no one knows about it. Exactly. Right. I call it my dog and pony show. Uh, yes. I can put on my dog and pony show. Right. And, you know, I think, I think what you're saying about the, the sort of um, prejudice for towards extroversion is one reason that you'll kind of, you'll see, if you, if you go and look online about introversion and introverts, you'll see some pretty angry introverts. There's sort of a pressure oh. release going on right now okay. of, of, of negative, negative energy towards extroverts mm -hmm. that I think will balance out for a lot, little eventually. But right now, it's like finally we're getting our voice and right. some voices are angry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that release, that pressure valve. Mm -hmm. Right. That, it's interesting, actually, that is a, a big shift. Also, I call it the nerd's revenge. So yeah. in, in the past, those in technology have been labeled as nerdy or, you know, socially awkward. And now the revenge is if you are technically uh, savvy, you are the king. <laughs> Yep. If you know what That's you're doing right. there, there's a real shift. I like to see it. I like to to be able to to call it the balance, which is what I'm all about. But now we're balancing out where there's not some things that are better than others. But it's all good. It, mm -hmm. it you know it, uh, it they are all beautiful qualities that uh, and 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 individualized and unique wherever you are. So I think that's really awesome. So we can get your book where? Amazon and ind independent bookstores and Barnes mm -hmm. and Noble and wherever you shop for books. All right. It should be available. And if it's not, ask them for it. <laughs> okay. Yes, that, that would be good. I'm holding up your book right here. It's a beautiful cover, by the way. Did you do I that cover? I love the cover. Did you no, that? no. It was this, I had the same artist for both covers, and I absolutely adore it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see the name here, Lisa Amoroso, cover design. Front cover list. She did the she did the design, and I'm I'm blanking on the name Jessie of the illustrator. Kuhn. Yes, Jesse mm -hmm. Kuhn. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> yeah, just just a wonderful. It just seems to me to capture the sort of sweetness mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, uh, that I wanted that I that I would have wanted if I had could have done it myself. Yes. So introverts in love, the quiet way to happily ever after by Sophia Sophia Dembling. So get yours at Amazon. And because I am being called the very honorable moniker of the Asian Oprah because of all my past Oprah guests and winning some awards. My Asian Oprah giveaway today is a free copy of Introverts in Love. So you, if you are the first one to go on either LinkedIn, Facebook, or my website, the number four balance.org, you will get a free signed copy by Sophia. So don't delay (laughs) you can multitask and if you're an introvert you're probably watching this on the computer then you can go and grab one first i i guess i should qualify and have the introvert when if i get a tie whoever's the introvert gets the book how's that Uh, how would they prove it how would they prove it Mm, yeah that's a good question what is a checklist for those of you who are wondering if you're an introvert or an extrovert the number one thing you said is you get you get drained in social circumstances or with a lot of people. What are some other qualities that, that people would be able to self-diagnose as an introvert? Oh, gosh. Boy, that's a tough... Um, you know, you might be able to go to parties, but you would rather sit and watch than participate. Okay. We, tend to, we tend to really enjoy watching. Mm-hmm. Uh, we tend to be sort of deep thinkers, slow thinkers. We, we're, we, we get into our own heads a lot. Mm. About, I would say, 87% of us really hate the telephone. <laughs> yeah. we, don't, we don't want to talk on the phone, pretty much any form of communication rather than the telephone. Okay. We really do like people very much, but we prefer them one-on-one mm-hmm. or maybe small groups mm-hmm. to large groups of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are some of those are some of the the biggest yeah the biggest ones. I interesting, think. interesting. Uh, my my uh, friend qualifies, and the, the one that was here for my uh, horoscope, she mm-hmm. she definitely qualifies with that. So I am about out of time. So is there any advice? One last piece of advice that you would like to give to an introvert and an extrovert when it comes to happily ever after. Know yourself, know what your thresholds are, know what you need, and then as with any other issue in a relationship, if you can talk about it and put it out there, then introversion, extroversion should not interfere with your happiness as a couple. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Sophia, for joining me on Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. You are an an illuminating Yes, thank you for helping the introverts around the world express their uniqueness. And uh, extroverts out there, listen up. (laughs) Well, thank you. It was a lot of fun. Good. Thank you so much. Peace in and peace out to you. All right. It is at the end of the show where I ask you to step up to my balance bar. And what do we have today? I just did the Asian Oprah giveaway. So the next thing to do is to talk about uh, what is going on in May and June. Um, I am going to be teaching on the beach. So stay tuned for the exact dates. I'm going to be giving a workshop on balance Tai Chi Gong, which is a cross between Tai Chi, oldest martial arts form, and Qi Gong, which is the medical side of health-related exercise. And that's uh, 18 forms, and it's it's uh, a moving meditation that promotes inner peace one breath at a time. So please do contact me. We are organizing small groups all around Southern California area. So if you'd like to be part of that, please do contact me. And it does help with all health vortexes, body, mind, spirit, soul, particularly the critical mind. So if you're suffering from uh, the voice in your head that beats you up every time you turn around, then this is a class for you. Next week, we are 
in uh, that time of the month. <laughs> it is the call-in episode where I get to be the other moniker of mine, Dr. Marissa, the kinder, gentler Dr. Laura. And if you are interested in signing up to get free balance uh, tune-up of your life tires and a smog check, check of your belief systems, please do contact my assistant producer, Jarvis Essex, and you can find him on Facebook, as well as just contacting me at forbalance.org and put in Jarvis, and we'll get you on that list. And that's it for today. Tune in next week for another fabulous episode of Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa Pay. That's P for positive, E-I. And remember, it's all about balance. Peace in and peace out. Don't turn.